Bonjour and welcome to the recruitment flex. Shelly, you are surrounded by three good looking men, at least on screen. Are, are you going to be okay? Can you do this? Well, I'm, I am enjoying this. I'm loving it. Absolutely. I don't, I don't get this much. Uh, I'm not surrounded by men that often. So I have the pleasure of introducing today. Uh, we have two very special guests that we are so lucky to have joining us. Like the brain power here is, is amazing. Um, today we have joining us Jeff Dickey Chasens, who is known around the world as the job board doctor. Jeff, thanks for coming in and joining us. You bet. Glad to be here. We also have joining us Stephen Rothsberg, who is the founder of College Recruiter. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And I'm glad I was able to dress appropriately. <laughs> yeah, I love the Canadian jersey. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I was counting before the show how many times that you've been on. And Jeff, I think this is your fifth appearance. So the gold watch mm -hmm. is in the mail somewhere. We're shipping it to Idaho. Is it Idaho uh, or Iowa? I, I, I get Iowa people. is is closer to where I am than Idaho. Yeah. So where are you again? I forget. I'm in Iowa. I'm in Iowa. Iowa. Where there it's going to snow today. So there you go. But he likes Idaho potatoes, and so maybe that was the confusion. E everyone does, I guess, <laughs> right? Canadians. And, and Stephen, <laughs> you've been on. Um, I think this is your third or fourth time. So. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, it Appreciate only feels like a dozen for, for you guys. But yeah. yeah. It feels <laughs> like a dozen. You're right. We're happy yes. you're here. Thank you for joining us. So for I'm excited. This should be really fun. Excellent. And so for those in the audience that maybe hadn't heard some of the back catalog um, of the different times we've had you on the show, Jeff, could I have you start us off by just sharing with us, uh, sharing with the audience? Um, a little bit about who you are and why you're so world famous. I will give it a shot. I did not realize I was world famous until I you came are. on the show. So that's, this is, this is great. <laughs> this is great for me. Um, no, I've been in the job board industry since 1997. I, I started out with this company called Dice and uh, kind of rode the, the um, Ferris wheel with them. And then uh, about 15 years ago, I started up a consultancy um, to work as a business consultant with job boards. And uh, to date, I've worked with about 750 job boards around the world and in pretty much every country you can possibly imagine using every possible model that you can possibly imagine. And, you know, I'm more than happy to say I am a job board geek. I really get into it. Um, and. That's what I do for a living. Thank you. Now, Stephen, can you do the same for the audience that is not familiar or have heard of College Recruiter? And you do a lot of great work in the industry. So could you oh, share with the audience a bit about you? Yeah, sure. So I uh, grew up in Winnipeg, um, dual U.S. Canadian citizen, which is why I'm wearing a Team Canada jersey for those who are watching the, the, the video. And for those who aren't, Yes, I am very good looking. Um, moved to Minneapolis. I think I'm probably the only person in the history of Minnesota to ever have moved here for the weather. Um, <laughs> and I started the company that, that College Recruiter grew out of about three decades ago. Um, early on, we were doing things like publishing employment magazines, which went online in the 90s. And um, College Recruiter now serves about 13 million students and recent grads a year, uh, global, primarily what we call early career, zero to five years of experience, heavily programmatic, um, heavily performance-based pricing, cost per click, cost per application, um, et cetera. Um, and uh, Jeff's been a longtime friend and uh, consultant, and we used to do a podcast together, so I figured we should... Uh, I figured I could kind of rope him in on this. And he said that I've got literally nothing else to do. So why not? <laughs> and you think he's really, lying too. <laughs> a really good podcast, Job Board Geeks. I think you can still go and check out the back catalog. Yep. And uh, Stephen, Inside Job Boards is one that I listen frequently. And I've got some talking points or questions around one of your most recent interview that I'm going to be included. So do check out inside job boards. If you're in the space, it's a good one. So how about we start off with job boards? 
because you guys are the expert. I work in the job board space. And um, this year, there's many ways to describe 2023 when it comes to the job board space. And uh, I think about when I started in 2010, um, they were saying, well, job boards are dying, right? And obviously, we're 13 years later, and we're still here. But I am not face as challenging a year in job board space than I did in 2023. So let's let's just start with maybe of a recap of what you guys have seen. And um, so, Jeff, how about I start with you? What's your thoughts overall? What happened in 2023 in the job board space? So there was uh, a ton of growth and a ton of activity and a ton of sales in 2022 and 21. Mm -hmm. And um, it almost felt frenzied to me at times. And you know, looking at what uh, my clients were doing and looking at the public numbers was just kind of crazy. And so I, I suspected 23 was going to be a slowdown. I did not expect it to be as much of a drop off a cliff as it turned out to be for a number of the job boards out there. Um, I think it's safe to say that the vast majority of my clients who are niche job boards saw drops in revenue um, from anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. Um, and most of that happened in the first two quarters. And then there's been a gradual recovery as we moved into the fall. Um, it was more dramatic at the top of the food chain. I mean, you know, indeed famously, you know, let go thousands of people had a 50% drop in job postings. They just posted again, uh, more drops, uh, you know, zip recruiter ha uh, lost a lot of blood this year. The, the interesting thing about this, though, is that all the way through this, this rough year for a lot of job boards, there were pockets of stability and even growth. Uh, most of the major uh, freelance sites like Upwork and Fiverr and uh, Headhunter, uh, they all saw growth. They all saw mm -hmm. revenue growth. They saw volume growth. Um, and then in a lot of the niches I worked in, uh, there was no drop. It was flat. Um, yeah. and a lot of that depended on, you know, the audience as opposed, you know, tech was kind of ugly, but, uh, you know, areas like healthcare were pretty solid. So, um, I would, to me, remembering 2008, I would say that this year was on a par with, with, um, 2008, I think 2008's effects mm. are going to be felt longer were felt longer than 2023. Yeah. Actually, I'm pretty bullish about next uh, about next year, but we'll see what Stephen has to say. Yeah, Stephen, what's your thoughts here? And I, I want you to add in if you think uh, it was a blip or if this is a sign of times of what's coming. Yeah, no, I think that the, you know, the, the analysis that Jeff provided, I would echo it. Um, in, just interesting for me to listen to sort of what he's seeing across globally, lots of different sites, lots of different niches, and how we saw very much the same. Um, what I would add to it, we started to see a slowdown and didn't realize it in probably late November, early December 2022. It's always hard to know on a week to week, even month to month basis, whether it was just one or two big customers that took longer to say yes, or whether this is an overall trend. Mm -hmm. By January, it was obvious that it was definitely slowing down. And then, and it's hard to remember that it's only, what, 11 months ago now, when Silicon Valley Bank kind of, you know, went under and there was all that turmoil January, February, that's when IT recruiting screeched to a halt and credit lines were getting frozen. I mean, it's, I have a hard time believing that it was still actually this calendar year. We definitely saw a slowdown. Um, Jeff talked about 20 to 40%. We were somewhere in there in Q1. Um, hmm. For College Recruiter, we were already coming well out of it in Q2. By the end of Q2, we were right back to where we were by late 2022. Um, Q3 was higher. Q4 definitely looks to be higher. So to us, the, it's the, the slowdown, if you will, the recession, maybe you could call hmm. it is in the rear view mirror. 
So if we look at the big players, so obviously College Recruiter, would you consider it more, it's a generalized site for a niche audience. Is, is that a good yeah. description of it? Uh, we, we definitely consider ourselves to be a niche site um, okay. based on like years of experience, education. By no means are we in the same league as an Indeed or, or a LinkedIn or, or a Zip Recruiter, but we are, we're one of the higher traffic niche sites. So you're seeing an uptake, uh, you're seeing a stronger going into Q1 next year, you're feeling pretty good about it. Do you think, um, Stephen, that Indeed and ZipRecruiter are feeling the same way that you are? Um, yes, I do, but there's probably a lot more turmoil at Indeed than there is at LinkedIn. LinkedIn has been much more stable in terms of the products they offer, customers, et cetera. Indeed deliberately disrupted their entire ecosystem um, a little over a year ago. And I think it was the right decision. I think it could have been executed better, switching to more of a pay for performance model. They sprung it too quickly on their customers. But I think in the long term, three, four years from now, I think w people will forget how disruptive it was to their customers and to and to Indeed, and they'll be in a better place. Thoughts on Zip Recruiter going into next year? What's your feelings there, Jeff? Um, Zip Recruiter has uh, just has some real problems. I think you know the big layoff, and then. Um, sort of underperformance throughout the year. Um, you know, they're, they're a fraction of the size of Indeed, but they're kind of behaving like Indeed in terms of uh, their losses and their inability to sort of get going forward. Um, you know, I don't know much, in, you know, particularly about ZipRecruiter other than what I just read in the, you know, in the quarterlies, but I get the feeling that there's, Growing pains is what's really going on there. That something, something at a management level uh, and something at sort of an ongoing execution level isn't quite working the way that they thought it was going to work. Um, having said that, I mean, who knows? They could turn it around and have a phenomenal 2024. Um, I do think across the entire industry, there is going to be a return to pre pandemic levels. Uh, in 2024, you know, a correction, you might say. Yeah. Um, but there's going to also be some off the charts growth in some of the subsectors that are being most affected. You know, you put anyone that's using AI or has AI experience and oh, my God, you know, people go nuts. Uh, and it's kind of it's kind of fun. I mean, it's fun to joke about it, but it's also an indication of how pervasive in just one year generative AI has become uh, across the labor market. Mm. But I think Zip has issues. I, I personally disagree with Steven. I don't think Indeed is smooth sailing going forward. They remind me a lot of Monster uh, mm. in the 2000s. I think they suffer from what's called big company syndrome. You know, <laughs> we, we, can, we can do no wrong. This is the way we do it. I mean, when you start dictating to your customers you know, sort of core stuff about the products that you're going to offer them and sort of say our way or the highway, that's always a clarion sign of the big, the big company syndrome. And, you know, they've executed incredibly well over the years, uh, but I don't think they're acting like the Indeed that we saw in the 2000s or 2010s. Interesting. Well, what, what makes me... I, I wouldn't say that indeed it's clear sailing, but I think it's clear to me that I'm more bullish on indeed than, than Jeff is. And that's fair. Um, yeah. One of the reasons I'm bullish on indeed is the massive growth that they're having outside of North America. Yeah. Mm, you you take true. a look at the European markets and two years ago, indeed wasn't even in some of those markets yeah. or barely. Yeah. And now they're dominating almost every single European market that matters. And it's only a matter of time before you see them going into 
Egypt and Morocco and, you know, wait until they go to Australia and Seek discovers that, hey, there is this thing called cost per click. Uh, and well, that's going to be a though, rude awakening for them, just like it was for Stepstone. Well, they've been in Australia for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. that's uh, right. And they have not been able to supplant Seek in any way. Like, uh, I remember when I worked at Indeed, Australia, this is uh, 2015. Australia was a yeah. big part of the strategy. And they put a, a lot of headcount. They put a lot of resources. And they just never made that inroad. There might be a time that it just clicks over to the next side that they finally get there. But I, I really good points on the countries. They're definitely growing outside of North America to mm -hmm. a level that we're not seeing. And like Germany's the perfect example because yeah, they right. didn't really exist and they're really dominating in that market. Yeah. So in twenty twenty four, um, will it be the year that Google for jobs? <laughs> um <laughs> And, I, you know, I, I heard you you laughing there, Jeff, because you know I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> we had this discussion. Um, so talk talk to us here about Google for Jobs and um, are they finally going to make anything significant of it? Well, so there's definitely people out there uh, that think Google for Jobs you know, paid ads are going to be incredibly disruptive and there will be, there will be no reason for uh, companies to ever use anything resembling a job board again. Um, and I guess my response to that is, you know what? Uh, job boards have been using Google since their inception. You know, they've been heavily using AdWords, which in all, all this is, is a highly specialized version of, of AdWords. Um, if Google can actually make that, big, big step of actually launching it and not, and not keeping it forever in beta mode, that would be, that would have an effect, but all it's really going to do is going to line Google's pockets with more job board money. Um, if they are successful in keeping it on the market, uh, because they love to launch things and then kill them, mm -hmm. um, that would be the second really big step. To, so Google might actually be standing up and moving forward at that point. Um, and so in that case, again, I just see it as another marketing channel. It's going to gobble up a lot of the very large multinational job boards revenue. Uh, it'll gobble up some of the enterprise level advertisers, just like AdWords does right now. Um, and in certain cases, some of the niche boards will make take, uh, you know, a, a advantage of it. But, you know, is it going to destroy anything? No. If, and that's if it ever actually moves into the light you know so do you guys have any insights of obviously in canada it's gone like silent like jeff mm -hmm. uh, have you heard anything about launching it like is is there anything the most i know about launching it is there are certain people that write a lot on linkedin that believe that <laughs> launch is imminent and you know and i'll go in and i'll read it and they'll say okay Maybe you know something I don't know. And then another six months will go by and I'll look down and they'll be <laughs> posting the same post. Um, I have no doubt that Google is doing lots of testing and fadoodling with uh, how they want to do it. But I, I have no knowledge of, of a launch date. You know, they, the closest I've seen to that is I follow some of the search engine uh, blogs and they've talked uh, and Google just released a rollout of, of their plans for paid advertising, which they do, I think, once a quarter or once every six months. And if you looked at it the right way and you squinted, you could kind of pretend that maybe in code they're saying that they're going to launch paid job ads. But that's about the only way you could come up with anything solid. So. And I couldn't squint, so it didn't look like that to me. <laughs> well, I, Steven, I can, what's your take yeah, here? I can, I can speak to this. Um, yep. So I think what we're talking about here are the, the paid ads that, you know, if you were selling vacuum cleaners or cars or, you know, ice cream makers or whatever, you'd have a product ad. Um, and if, you, if a user went, ran a search on like, what's the best new electric vehicle for 2022, you'd see like little tile kind of icons, little photo of the car, a few lines of description, um, and it would link 
to the retailer's website where you could get more information. That's what they're talking about doing. That's what they have been doing with jobs. So, you know, you'll have a little all state logo or, you know, government of British Columbia or whatever the employer might be along with a, probably a job title and a URL to maybe the ATS might be the job board, wherever that, wherever that job resides. They did announce months ago that they were rolling that out in what some people called a beta. It turns out it was actually an alpha. They had a few partners like zip, like indeed, like LinkedIn. And from what I heard from those organizations, the traffic that they saw rounded to zero. It was mm. that, that they had, they, the spend was virtually nothing and the traffic that they got back was virtually nothing. So I think it was roughly a month ago, couldn't be more than two months ago now, they, Google kind of revamped it. They tweaked yeah. the layout a bit, trying to add more prominence to those ads. I don't know after that, what the impact of that, I suspect that they're waiting to see and waiting until they can drive a lot of traffic and then they'll start to sell it. Um, we've been told by um, one of the engineers working on the product that we are in the beta group. So we're gonna be in like group two. Now, okay. they'll go from four or five job boards, I'm guessing to maybe a couple dozen, maybe a few dozen job boards, all probably in the US. And if it works for that second group, that's when I think you'll start to see hundreds or thousands. And then, and then I would totally agree with Jeff. I don't see this as being revolutionary for our industry. I see this as being evolutionary. And I think the big winners here are going to be the recruitment advertising agencies and the programmatic job ad distributors yeah. that have the time and the sophistication and the tools to take advantage of this. Because I'll tell you, Fred's Pizza Shop on the corner there is no freaking way that they're going to be able to log into Google, figure out how to do this, how to set their budgets, when to turn off these ads. I mean, if if it was a complete cluster blank, blank, blank on Indeed when they tried to get SMBs to do it, I can only imagine what would happen on Google. It would just be worse. So, uh, you know. Like back in the really gold rush, point. it wasn't the miners who made mm -hmm. the money. It was the people selling the picks and shovels. So Shelly, you should be you should be happy that you're selling picks and shovels. <laughs> yeah, she's rubbing her hands together, just like, oh maybe I that like private this. jet like isn't going. just a dream. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to talk about my man, my man Elon Musk. And to quote him, go fuck yourself, um, is the one of the my favorite clips that I've ever seen in the last couple of days. If you guys haven't seen that about, I yeah, and, talking and, about the average, and calls out the CEO of Disney by name. That's classy. <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> uh, so, as you guys know, you recently release a job search component to X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I guess the word that I would use, a lot of people have uh, have used, is underwhelming. But Stephen, I would like to get your take is, can this get legs? I, I have one word to describe it. <sighs> <laughs> you got to give me more. You got to give me more. Uh, it's, it's, it's like almost useless. And I, I think that there are more people on podcasts talking about it than there are people who are actually <laughs> using it. it. It's just, it's, it's just the biggest waste of space since like the Toronto Maple Leafs playoff hopes. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I knew well, you I thought one of the funny way. things. <laughs> right? I had to work that in somehow. I knew you would. Well, I, I thought it. I thought it was really funny um, when he was quoted as saying, "I view this as uh, you know giving LinkedIn some comp competition." It's like, oh my god, you know, LinkedIn is looking on the bottom of its shoe, saying, "What did I just step in there?" You know, it's like this is this is not <laughs> not nothing did they, happened. <laughs> did they even notice that they had stepped in something? Like yeah, exactly. It's, it's, exactly. Yeah. Well, once the smell got there. Um, it's just not a, you know, I agree. It's, it's kind of like back to the nineties. It would be my, if I was still doing this and luckily most of my clients don't have to be 
have to go through this, I'd say, your site looks like this, you know, and I would show them a really God awful job board. Now I'll show them X and just say, you know, don't let this be your job board. Okay, please. So. But question on that end, is this just the first step? Is this, is there more coming here that's actually going to be marketable and useful? And this is not uncommon of how Elon approaches these things, right? Like, is this just the first step and it's going to get way better? Like, I, I hate underestimating Elon. Like, I, I do think there's more. It can't be what it is now. It just can't be. Well, I mean, <laughs> all I can do is look at the platform since he's bought it and look at what has been, you know, announced, what's rolled out, what's been developed. And there's been, you know, 10 announcements for every one rollout. And for every rollout uh, <laughs> that's gotten developed, there's been like zero. I mean, they, they kind of get dumped out there. They don't make the 44 billion that he needs and they goes on to the next thing. And I think this is gonna be another one of those things. It's, it's so underwhelming that it won't have any traction and so he won't see any money. And so he'll start looking for the next thing that he thinks can turn a quick buck. I, so I, I guess... agree. I think, I think he's way too ADD to be able to focus on this and actually get traction. Um, mm -hmm. and, and as somebody who is ADD, I'm not criticizing that, but he's going to be on to the next thing next week. So I guess the reviews are out and they're not good for X. Let's yeah. hopefully yeah, next year at this time be really interesting. It'll probably be dead. You're probably right, but I will not say that yet. But the reason we got, we did this podcast is Steven, you reached out to me after mm -hmm. hearing a podcast we did, I think a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. talking about LinkedIn. And I was saying LinkedIn is not, a job board it's a social network and you disagreed and i think you agreed with what shelly had said that it's definitely a job board so steven i'm going to give you the first word uh i definitely still think it's a social network first and foremost but i'll i'll let you put your points in and then i'll refute you after yeah thanks so um i was i thought the best way to approach this discussion is to first define what a job board is okay so I did a little bit of research and tried to come up with a good definition. And the best definition I was able to find is it's a platform where jobs are listed that allow companies to search and apply for candidates and candidates can post resumes. And if Jeff is thinking to himself, hmm, those words sound kind of familiar, um, just take a look at the job board article from April 30th, 2014, um, <laughs> because, because that's where he wrote that. Um, I'm paraphrasing it only slightly. And he continues to talk about if employers can post jobs and the application process is facilitated, then you can call it a job board. So LinkedIn's revenues are overwhelmingly job postings and what I would call resume searching. People signing up for recruiter licenses and they're searching what LinkedIn likes to call profiles, but their resumes or CVs. There's really, there's really very little difference. If it walks like a duck and if it talks like a duck, it is a duck. Now, one thing that LinkedIn, the surges of the world will say is, but look at all the engagement, look at people posting content, videos, blog articles, whatever. That's all according to people at LinkedIn, LinkedIn leaders, they will candidly say that that is a traffic acquisition strategy. Content is a traffic acquisition strategy. It's not a business model. The business model is selling postings, selling resume searching, and that's what job boards do. Okay. Okay. Jeff, your take. Yeah. Here. All right. Well, strangely enough, I have thoughts about this as well. Uh, I think Steven's absolutely right. It's a job board. And I'm sorry, Serge, you're wrong, except I will give you this. So one of the things that I've done over the years when I talk at conferences is I talk about different job board models. You know, there's mm -hmm. the so-called traditional model, which would look like the old monster of yore, you know, where it's all about posting jobs. Um, but there's a model that, er that emerged pretty early on in the industry that I call a hub, where it's built around a specific focus, some, some sort of professional focus 
Um, and like Stephen says, it uses content and uh, uh, user engagement, uh, user uh, interactions to build um, uh, traffic for the site and to build a a activity for the job board. And it's monetized on the job board side of things, right? And that's, I think, exactly what LinkedIn is. So, like, I can point you to a little hub like Archonnect, which is a uh, has been around for a long time. It's for architects. Um, the vast majority of what's on the job board is not jobs. It's all this other stuff that architects use and do and talk about and all this sort of stuff. But all the money comes from the job from the job board piece. LinkedIn's mm -hmm. just the same way. And so, yes, you can say it's a social network, but what it really is is a job board that figured out how to monetize social interactions through on the job board side. Uh, I mean, we've seen this over and over and over again. Facebook is the huge exception, you know, where mm -hmm. they decided early on, no, we're an advertising platform and we'll run ads for anything and everything. And so it's all about traffic for us. Uh, LinkedIn was never that way, although some people could argue that maybe it's heading that way at this point. But so I guess you weren't totally wrong, but you're certainly not right. Uh, Shelly, do you want to pile on here? You could, might as well. What's your take here? No. Uh, so what's interesting is the fact that the John Q public doesn't realize yeah. that um, it was an intentional business model of LinkedIn um, because we always argue um, why, why don't we advertise jobs on Facebook? Um, and, and the answer is, as you very, very simply have put it, Jeff, so thank you, is just that that's not what they ever intended it to be. And so the consumer, um, you know, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook, the consumer is you um, either engaging what we what we want to consider to be social versus professional or work related. Um, and it just. I mean, I remember the first time I saw LinkedIn and I thought, this is the most brilliant thing because it solves what I, I guess for me, the most disappointing part is that it hasn't evolved mm -hmm. um, to uh, their technology hasn't involved, evolved and their matching is just awful. Yet they have the most information uh, on human beings, certainly in your professional life. They have everything of mine, everything. And they have my thoughts and they have every piece of activity <laughs> in my professional life. Um, and yet they still send me jobs for helicopter pilots. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So all good points. <laughs> I will seed uh, a bunch of points to you guys, but I'll, uh, I, I did some research as well, Stephen, and here's what I came up with. So last year in revenue, we're talking about $14.5 billion in revenue so yes, yeah, six billion was talent solutions, but they do not break down talent solutions really well because talent solutions does include job slots, uh, basically their job board model. It does include uh, their navigator, their recruiter um, product. It also includes their learning and development product as well. And I don't know how big a piece that is as well. Then you look at marketing, and marketing is five billion dollars in revenue compared to six billion in talent solutions. Then there's like a two to three billion of different stuff, right? So it is not even fifty percent of the revenue. And I I disagree. I think they want to be a marketing platform more. It just happened in their. I don't think this was planned. I don't think their plan was to get most of their revenue in the talent space because. Why would anyone want to do that? Like when you're looking at the marketing or sales space, which is just such a bigger industry and there's so much more dollars to be made. So they kind of fell into it. But to me, the way I, I look at it is like they do a good job at it. I'll give mm -hmm. them full credit and they've got a good business model. I agree with Shelly that um, the platform hasn't evolved and I think they have so much technical debt that it's really hard to evolve to the point that they need to. But I compare them to McDonald's in the sense that mm. I would not call McDonald's a coffee shop, even though they have great coffee, they're still not a coffee shop. And LinkedIn is not a job board. They're a social platform that happens 
to monetize the talent side of it. But if you ask me 10 years from now what their revenue mix will be, I guarantee you talent will be uh, 20 to 30% compared to the 40%. It's going down in that way because there's a lot more money to be made in different ways. So I am still sticking, guys. I don't think it's um I don't think it's a job board. I well, if I if I gave you different numbers, would you be open to reconsidering? Well, so no, but I'd like okay. to hear your numbers. I'll give you the numbers anyway. So about seven, eight years ago, we co-hosted a couple of conferences for them with them. User okay. conferences, employers were the attendees, we had speakers, that kind of thing. One of the people that I was working with, we were talking about that, that breakdown that you just cited, you know, how much is talent solutions, how much is marketing and whatever. And so what she said is that their internal numbers are that 87% of their revenues come from postings and posting relating products, recruiter licenses, recruiter related products. And that the other 13% are from people who want you to use them to buy cryptocurrency and uh, to be, you know, refinance your home and whatever. And I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but we've all seen that those, those sorts of ads on LinkedIn. The reality is that LinkedIn has a really powerful motive to de-emphasize how much money they're making from employers. And so they move as much money out of talent solutions and into things like marketing as they can. So if you go and you buy like the pay-per-click kinds of ads that run alongside pages for an employment ad, they call that marketing. But it's not. It's not marketing like most of us think. They're not selling hamburgers there. They're still saying sign up for our class where you can learn to be a financial services representative. And oh, by the way, the company that's paying for that is Allstate. Um, so they, I, I, I agree with you that McDonald's is not a coffee shop, but I think a better analogy is McDonald's is not a salad restaurant. McDonald's does sell salad. Very few people buy it. You go to McDonald's because you want a really good infusion of grease, not because you're looking for croutons. Well, um, I actually go to McDonald's because of the salad. Uh, Steven. <laughs> you so liar. Thought. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> you Just... lie like a dog. <laughs> Steven and your facts. Um... I, I guess I will give you some points and I am going to take a step back and reevaluate my position on this. But right now I'm still very much like I, my, I move. I'm a little bit closer to agreeing, but I'm not there yet. So how about we jump into the prediction? Shelly, do you want to take yes. that? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to do uh, around the table here. Uh, predictions for 2024 in the job board space. Can we kick things off with you, Jeff? Sure. Uh, I, I've already made this prediction, but I'll make it again because I don't think a lot of people are hearing this. But I do think, uh, you know, I just got finished writing my update and there was, you know, a mix, pretty much a 50-50 mix on people that are losing revenue and people that are seeing significant gains in revenue. I think in Q1, Q2, it's all going to flip. People are going to start making money again, even the big boards. And um, we're going to see uh, hopefully a better alignment between what employers need, know they need to do and what they actually do. Because I think one of the problems with the market right now is that employers have been listening to recession, recession doom talk too long. And they're mm -hmm. scared to hire people, even though they know they need them. Thank you. Steven, I have two predictions and they both boil down to the word divergence. Um, I had to, I had to like work in a big fancy word like that in, into this conversation. So one is, and I think particularly for your recruiters uh, um, audience that I think this will um, either appeal to some of them or scare some of them. Um, I think that we're going to see employers 
finally creating incentive systems for quality instead of quantity. That forever, employers have been telling job boards, we want quality, 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 but the incentive systems, how they buy from us, has always been about quantity, quantity, quantity. So shockingly, job boards have been giving employers what they wanted, what they've yeah. been paying for, what we're incentivized to do, which is quantity, quantity, quantity. But the tools are now there and they're cheap and easy to use. That quality is now something that job boards can be incentivized to provide. There are going to be employers that will do that and they will actually get the quality. And the quantity, the poorly converting candidates, masses of them, AI generated crap, those are going to go to the employers that choose not to incentivize their job board partners based on quality. So we're going to have some real winners and we're going to have some real losers. Um, the second um, prediction that I had um, is that I think we're going to see a small but rapidly growing minority of employers shifting away from interviewing virtually every qualified candidate to actually interviewing only about 5%. That AI is going to segment out candidates that are merely qualified based upon the application to candidates that also assess well and also are validated as being real. And so again, I think you're gonna get, you're gonna get recruiters at a small number of organizations able to spend a lot of time with really good candidates and they are gonna win a disproportionately high share of those. And then the poorly converting, poorly productive or, or um, unproductive employees are going to nap, nap, migrate over to the other employers. Again, winners, losers. Mm. So I'm going to go next, Serge, because I know you always want to have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> so interestingly enough, <clears throat> Stephen, I think my uh, prediction for 2024 is the explosion of the pre-screen. Mm. So it, it's actually very similar to what, what you were just talking about. But I'm thinking... We moved so far over to just quickly, quickly, just give us your name and phone number, which is fine for certain, you know, open hiring practices, right? Where you just need somebody to show up and, and hope that they show up, but you hire 50% more because 50% don't show up, right? Like that's, that's a whole different thing. I think uh, what we are going to see is going to be more of that, slow it down just, just a touch still make it easy and nice for people to do but we're going to see more of a slowdown because the the demand you're right the demand was in some sectors they will always demand high volume right mm -hmm. because they chew through so many people but i think if we look at the overall market um we're going to see those organizations who ask really good questions um uh, will get really good people so that's I know it's vague, but we're going to see an uptick in the pre-screen. It's going to slow things down just a little bit. And now, I Serge, I, I agree Serge, with you, over Shelley. to you. <laughs> you get All the right, last I got, a, I got a couple of predictions. So okay. the first one is, might be a shocker, might <laughs> not be. Indeed, or Recruit Holdings acquires Zip Recruiter. It's going to happen mm -hmm. in 2024. And I'm going to tell you why it's going to happen. It's a couple of reasons. If you dig into Zip Recruiter's financial filings, um, one of the things that really stands out to me is their bank covenants. They are very hampered by their bank covenants. And as revenue has been reduced, it's put them in a very difficult position. And if we look at realistically who in the market could afford them, that it makes sense to acquire it. It fits kind of um, a market that indeed has been very aggressive, which is the SMB in the past couple of years, and they've made inroads. This would just bring them to a next level. Um, obviously, I think the other factor of it is North America indeed is, they, they've been so dominant for so many years that they're, the room for growth has diminished. 
and zip recruiter might be a nice little cushion that comes in so indeed or recruit holdings acquires zip recruiter the second prediction that i have actually came from a recent podcast that you did Stephen, you and peter zolman on inside job boards with richard collins from cv mm. wallet and i've been following cv wallet for a long time and we've been talking about basically replacing the resume for how long and we've been talking about skill-based hiring and there's obviously assessments have come in play i think what cv wallet has built is the future with a combination of some type of assessment so for those that don't know basically what cv wallet does it does a verification of any skill that basically you want to put in you can verify that you have this skill and then it gives you a database it does multiple things first of all it verifies that a person actually has worked there that they've had this certification so it, it kind of is really comfort comforting for an employer knowing that yes this person has done what they said they've done and i don't need to verify it any further and you combine that with an assessment like plum i think plum by itself is really good but if you combine it with a cv wallet that okay they've actually done this in this particular role and then they have this type of personality type or <clears throat> this type of skill set i think that combination is actually what the future is not any of these skill-based platforms which i think are going to make some inroads i think cv wallet if i had to invest in one company in this industry that i think will make a major impact it's richard collins and cv wallet because first of all the guy has exited three times which i wasn't aware i was just aware of click iq uh, but i was just so impressed um, if anyone can do it it's him so those are my two predictions shelly Thank you, Serge. Very good. Very good. Do you, I, I want your insights on quickly. First of all, you just, yeah or nay, Stephen, is it possible that Recruit Holdings would acquire Zip Recruiter? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if it's, if I, I think it's quite, quite possible. Okay. Um, absolutely. And, and you're, prediction about, you know, CV wallet and the validation and all of that. When I was talking about employers interviewing 5% of the candidates, it's exactly the scenario I was talking about. Assess them, validate them, then interview them. Yeah. I Jeff, think... what do you think? Um, on the zip thing? Yeah. I mean, if zip keeps lagging and stumbling, uh, they're, they're definitely a takeover target. And like you said, for, it would be a good target for Indeed. It would actually be a good target for StepStone, too. Mm -hmm. But StepStone mm -hmm. tends to move very slowly, so I yeah. can't see that happening. Indeed has missed a number of acquisitions that it could have gotten. Uh, so, um, And, you know, actually, I'm very cynical about developments in human resources, having worked in the industry for so long. We, we talk about all these wonderful things like CV Wallet and and assessment and uh you know all these things have been around for a long time yeah and yet the companies are still struggling with the basic concept of writing a job posting that will attract a candidate <laughs> um so i think there will be some employers out there that take advantage of all this stuff and do all these great things they'll get written up in the blogs and uh you guys will interview them and they'll they'll become well known and 95% of the rest of them won't do any of this stuff, you know, unless it shows up on Indeed's, you know, dashboard and says, click this button to get an instant assessment of, you know, surge. I don't know. Okay, why not? It's only a buck. <laughs> so I'll do it. Well, well, well that's why not happen. is because it's surge. I mean, why would you want to assess yeah. surge? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who would ever want to hire surge? Well, on that note, guys, this was a lot of fun. I think your insights are always appreciated. So for anyone that wants to get a hold of you, Jeff, what's the easiest way for anyone to reach out to you? Uh, run, don't walk to jobboarddoctor.com. And you can reach me a variety of ways from that important website, one of the most important websites out there. So I would agree. I would agree. How about yourself, <laughs> Stephen? Stephen at collegerecruiter.com. Boat. 
very well steven's very active on linkedin so do you definitely follow and definitely follow jeff dickie chasen's on linkedin gents this was a pleasure thanks again thanks, thanks so much Au revoir. bye